and welcome to another episode of The Pit Stop. I'm Manila Luzon, your hostess, and I am joined by Emmy Award winning hairstylist and Heather Delta Work. Hi, lady. Hi, Delta. So good to hear you. Thank you for having me. We are just starting this new season of RuPaul's Drag Race, and there is a lot to get through. There's a lot of girls. I think this is like the biggest cast ever. And there have been hundreds of drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race. So it's really important that these girls make sure that they stand out. Yeah, because some of them do blend. Some of them do remind you of other contestants that have been on the show. And you have to have that one spark, something that sets you apart. Last week, we saw our first contestant go home. Poor Soju and her pussing cyst. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That was a lot of information. It really is. The last time I was in this chair, I peed in this chair, but I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we also saw that Brooklyn Heights was our first winner. Mm -hmm. She had a strong start, right? Yeah, Brooklyn is a seasoned entertainer, a seasoned uh, queen in general. And so I think she was obviously gonna be a front runner. So we have a mini challenge. And this is actually a mini challenge they've done before on the season where they have to photobomb celebrities in these right. like photo pictures. We did that mini challenge. Did we? Well, we had to make a scene on the red carpet. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 you remember that now, yeah. yeah. I don't remember mine, but I can remember Stacy had, had her, her like breast out. And on this season, we have Silky not just taking out her breasts, no, she but getting it full on a buck naked. All of it. Letting everything hang out. And she owns it. Silky just said, guess what? This is out, this is out, that's out, that's out. She doesn't care because she's so powerful. And well, I think it's important for people to see that. Well, the challenge is to stand out. And she does. You know, it is the, well, the she challenge. she laid out. She full on she did. She laid she out. She got buck naked, she like draped the dress over her. Sure. Which one was your favorite one in the mini challenge? I did like Brooklyn a lot, but I liked Evie a lot too. I think Evie is so crazy. Oh my gosh. Standing there with Paris Hilton and just, she's just like foaming at the mouth. I loved looking it. Looking crazy. <laughs> I loved it. Um, some of the girls were a little bit boring, I gotta say. Like, girl, you know, step it up. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they're not doing enough. I don't know, I'm, I really give it up for Silky and Brooklyn Heights who won this challenge. Do you agree? I do give it up for them and I, and I think what you're saying is true. There are people that, especially in the beginning, want to just fly under the radar because they think, well, as long as I'm safe, I can make it to the next challenge. And of course the judges always say, I don't want you to be safe, but I think there's kind of an, it's kind of okay to be safe take a step back, maybe blend a little bit, be a little mm -hmm. bit of a wallflower, be the dark horse of the competition, sure. size up the other queens so that they can come in and, and pounce. So we have a maxi challenge. We have two teams and we're making two different movies. One is Good God Girl, Get Out! And one is Why I Gotta Be Black, Panther. The mini challenge winners, Brooklyn Heights mm -hmm. and Silky Ganache, they are the team captains and they're picking the teams. Mm -hmm. What do you think the most important thing is to ensure the success of either your performance or for your team's performance? 100% is communication. Mm -hmm. You have to know your part. If you don't hit it, they can't hit it. Yeah, in team challenges, especially this early on in the game, you have to find the way to to stand out, but also blend. Sure. We had Team Brooklyn in Why I Gotta Be Black, Panther. Mm -hmm. We have Nina West, we have Raja, Honey, Sugar, Plastique, and Ariel. RuPaul comes in there and she starts stirring the pot, yeah. talking about like, what do y'all think about, what do y'all think about Silky? These are competitors, but they're also cast members. Yeah. And you want to know what these people are thinking and what they're really about. Maybe they don't want it to be loud and someone else is being loud. It's bothersome to them. But I mean... It's RuPaul's Drag Race, girl. It's RuPaul's like, Drag I'm Race. sorry. You have to be loud. You, you have do. to be loud. You do. Well, we saw that with Mercedes. You know, she was really blending in. She was really, really quiet. She wasn't even blending in, girl. She just wasn't, uh, wasn't being noticed at, at all. all. Let's just get to the runway, because it's my favorite part. Best part. So it's horoscoped. Like, what's your sign, girl? Mm -hmm. I'm um, an Aquarius. Are you Aquarius? I'm a Leo. So who was the one that made you gag? Ah, uh, well, I really, really, really liked Vanjie's look. Ooh, with, with the, the Libra, with the scales. You know, I'm a firm believer in, like, not letting things wear you. There was a couple of times on the runway where I saw sort of a 
you know, I felt like it was a struggle because that thing had to be hard to balance. I mean, she is a scale, so she had to keep it balanced. But this is the place to wear that. I liked Honey Davenport. I'm a Leo. Mm -hmm. I'm also kind of related to her. So I, I just was living for the giant The mane. hair was beautiful. Her hair was gorgeous. Raja O'Hara had the beautiful horns, the fitted gown. I loved her hair. I loved that that was actually hair created into that. It wasn't just the horns. I loved her makeup. Her, the horns with the hair were really coolly integrated. And then she had the little hooks. Those elements that kind of push it over over the edge. There were a lot of horns. There were. Everyone was horny. You get Everyone horny. was horny. You get horny on Drag Race. So horny. I thought Plastique looked fantastic. She's beautiful. It was fantastic. beautiful. But I feel like with all this gold, beautiful things in the face and the hair, she, could, she probably could have used a, a simpler boot because all the focus was up here. Yeah, I just, when I see somebody beautiful like her, a queen that's beautiful like that, I just imagine sort of a spindly, strappy shoe that almost looks like, how are you walking in that? Yeah. And she's that girl to pull that off. I also really liked Brooklyn Heights. With beautiful. The, the splash of the water and the fish going down. Oh my God, that was gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. What did you think about Evie's Leo look? I loved it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was conceptual. And I don't think it's anything we've seen before on the runway that I idea of sort of electronics in that way. So I really like that she was able to take like the lion look, but really make it her own. And we're really getting to start to get to know her style of drag. Sure. We're so used to quote female impersonation that we forget that there's so many kinds of drag and so many ways to put your stamp on it. Mm -hmm. And it can be conceptual. Maybe it yeah. should be conceptual. So who didn't do it for you? Ariel's actual outfit seemed a little clunky. Um, she seemed to be struggling in it a little bit. I don't know if it was it was constricting because it was made of fur or, but just something about it didn't really give me the dimension because she is a tiny person. Um, yeah. Her hair was so beautiful, makeup beautiful, but I just saw this sort of, it almost looked like there was a cardboard piece that she was moving in. Nina West, for the main stage where people are seeing you from head to toe, I felt like that hem just had to be a little bit closer to the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, I, I mean, we're just nitpicking too, because, you know, sure. we like doing that. What about Mercedes? Bless Mercedes. There just wasn't enough. There was good ideas there. She just didn't go grand enough. It right. needs to be a little bit more extra. Right. And what about Kahana? I liked her wig a bunch. It was kind Ooh. of George Michael too funky. Like, it, I, I thought it was a really cool color. Something happened. I don't know if it was an intentional tearaway or if... Oh, no, it was not intentional. It wasn't intentional. It just got stuck on her heel. Okay. It really felt like, oh, I have this pretty yellow dress mm -hmm. and I got this cute wig. Yeah. Let me throw some horns on it and then we will call it my zodiac sign. Moving along, Moving along, we now get to watch their final edits of their movies. First up, we have Team Brooklyn Heights and Why I Gotta Be Black, Panther. I think that Nina West did a great job. I really enjoyed her performance. I really thought it was amazing. I liked the lampshade on her head. Uh, it was it a was really fun performance. I really thought that that particular team was a little bit shaky. Okay. I, I really wasn't following the whole storyline. The acting was a little bit, the acting was a little bit all over the place. I didn't really know. But you know who I really loved was Sugar. Oh, well, she was consistent the whole way through. Oh. She was consistent, she was realized, she stayed in her character. Um, the look she put together was really dead on. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. I, I thought she was absolutely great. Moving to the next one, Silky's group. I personally liked Good God Girl, Get Out. I liked that one a little bit better. I thought that was yeah. funnier. It was really funny. I think that Scarlett did an amazing job. I thought she did a really consistent job. I thought it was really funny. Just a side note, I loved looking at Silky in the final edit and seeing that that hairstyle she had on, as simple as it was, it was really delicate and beautiful on her. Yeah, yeah. you guys should get married. You love well, her so much. We were, we were planning to. Yeah? yeah. Okay. I really, I really love Scarlett. She, she was the last one picked. Mm -hmm. So she was like, well, if I'm gonna be the last one picked, I'm gonna prove to you that I'm going to slay this. Right. She did a great job. I thought she was really funny along with Evie. That was hilarious. Hilarious. 
who really wasn't doing it in these acting challenges for you? Mercedes. Mercedes was struggling, for sure. And I don't think that she was struggling just because she couldn't get one of the words right. I don't think that was the struggle. That was an example, but I think she just wasn't wrapping herself fully around a character, and I think you know, that is where you can fall apart because you're allowed to make the character anyone you want. There's a lot of moving parts yeah. and it's really easy to get swallowed up. So we had Mercedes and Kahana coming in as the voguing maids mm -hmm. and they had only a few lines and they weren't really able to make it work. Like yeah. not everybody is a dancer, so it has to either be funny or it doesn't exist. They really missed the opportunity to really like go extra. I mean, you only have a few lines and you better make those lines count. So we have the winners and it is Scarlett and Evie, a double win. Double win. What? Yeah. Why not reward? Why, why does it? Why does there have to be a tiebreaker? Why not just have two winners? Um, I think they were deserved. I think they did a really great job. They really did have a good chemistry in their acting challenge, and I feel like one couldn't have gone as far without the other one to play off of. Right. So I think they were both deserving. Which leaves Mercedes and Kahana in the bottom. Kahana in the bottom again. Again, Ooh. it's tough. It's tough being a bottom. I don't think one was really stronger than the other. Well, then we get to a lip sync. Work Bitch by Britney Spears, and now we have the chance to see these bitches work, right. bitch. I think up until the point that she actually did those, that sort of double athletic <laughs> Example. <laughs> it was like a back handspring in. She did it and it was exciting, but I wasn't as excited about the performance until that happened. Yeah. But my eyes were on Mercedes from beginning to the end of that quick three and a half minute performance. I think Mercedes captivated and I think she knew when she got here, oh, maybe I'm not a good actress. Maybe I'm nervous around these other people, but when I'm on this stage, I bet you I can lip sync the way I do back home better than anyone else. I Certainly better than the person next to me. I really could see the fire in her. Mm -hmm. I really saw that she was like, you know what? I need to uh, put down what I think of myself before right. and really th think of myself how I want to think of myself. And I do think that Mercedes um, deserved to stay. She really took what Rue and the judges had to say to heart, and she really was like, okay, you're right. I need to uh, put what was in the past behind me. Right. This is the present, and I want to move into the future, so I gotta do what I got to do now to get to the next place I want yes. to be. I agree. So now we have 13 queens. We do. Exciting. Well, I think this is an amazing Super fun, super funny episode. I'm really it. excited. Thank you, Delta, for joining me Thank you me for here. having me. I'm excited to see you as the host. Ooh, you know me. Well, that's all for this week. I want to thank Delta Work for being here with me. Thank you. Tune in next week for another episode of The Pit Stop. Bye! Hey beauties, it's Sasha Velour, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. Do you want all the hot Drag Race tea? Then you better subscribe to VH1's YouTube channel, and you'll have all the fresh videos sent directly to your inbox. Now that's something not to joke about.